Why is walking considered the golden standard in our society? You may not be aware of this golden standard, but what I mean, for example, is that it would be seen as so inspirational if right now I got out of my wheelchair and took a couple of steps. People would applaud me and maybe it would even go viral. But why do we as a society so badly want to cure or fix disabilities? Because I'm not waiting around for science to heal me so that I can start living. Think about it. In order for me to take a couple of steps, I need to train for years and years, day and night in. Now, does this sound any fun to you? Wouldn't you rather have me redirect all this energy into just living my life? And if living my life to the fullest can be made possible by using a wheelchair or any other mobility aid, shouldn't we embrace that instead? So let's question the golden standard our society holds by stating this. If living a fulfilled life requires the ability to walk, then the opposite must be also true. So does it mean that everybody that walks is living a fulfilled life? I don't think so. You guys are just half of the time miserable while standing up and I'm half of the time miserable while sitting down. So when you think of a person in a wheelchair, what picture do you paint in your mind? Do words like miserable, unfortunate, sad come up? If that's so, then I want to change your view. Because this view people have of disabled people is something that I'm almost aware, made aware of on almost a daily basis. When I get into my car, when I go shopping or going out with friends, people come up to tell me I couldn't live like that or I couldn't do that. By saying this, they assume that my wheelchair is the worst thing that has happened to me. Well, rest assured, it's certainly not. By saying I couldn't live like that and by not knowing anything else about me, in their mind, they have already condemned me to a miserable life. So the seemingly innocent remark may not be ill-intended, it can be quite offensive. So another relating misconception is that a lot of people think that I'm constantly concerned with my wheelchair, when in fact the opposite is true. Most of the times I even forget that I'm in a wheelchair, until the elevator is broken, of course. The only time I'm really concerned with my wheelchair is at the airport. Most people can't wait to be reunited with their loved ones. I can't wait to be reunited with my wheelchair. Why? Because my wheelchair provides me the ability to move around and be independent. And now, don't tell me that I don't know any better or that I don't know what I'm missing out on. I'm missing out on waiting in the line, bad parking spaces and getting my shoes dirty. No, but I know exactly what I'm missing out on. Trust me, I do have that much imagination. So, in short, walking is not something that I strive towards. However, I do strive towards living a happy life. So, let's talk more about these assumptions people ma make. Because of my visible disability, in general, people tend to make a lot of assumptions. And those can be very black and white. There is no gray area. Of course I know that friend of a friend of yours in a wheelchair living in another city. No, I don't. It's not some exclus exclusive club that we all join and pay membership for. And because I'm in a wheelchair, I must be paralyzed and I can't get out of my chair. And thus I sleep and bathe in my chair. Just to clarify, I don't. And some people, at the first glance, may assume I would not be capable of even attending school. But when I tell those people I finished my masters, I'm suddenly a Stephen Hawking to, the, to them. So since early childhood, I've been dealing with these assumptions. And I think one of the underlying issues contributing to these assumptions is of course representation, or actually lack of representation. This is why these low expectations people have of disabled people is embedded in our society. From early on, I do have a strong intrinsic motivation to battle against these expectations. And I have to say, I do get myself in trouble for that. A couple of years ago, I chose to travel all by myself to the Philippines for an internship. This was something that I wanted to do and with a lot of creativity, adaptive skills 
and determination, this was a rewarding experience. This was also a turning point because it reminded me to never deny a challenge despite people trying to limit me and to always push myself, figuratively and literally speaking. Of course, it's not all without difficulties. Sometimes my disability does stop me or I have to work harder. You also get creative and you develop a lot of other skills. For example, when I'm doing groceries, I like to take my time because I'm extremely bad at choosing what to have for dinner. But I cannot sit still anywhere in my chair without someone asking me every 30 seconds for help. In, in turn, this makes me feel very rushed. So I'm now conditioned to do my groceries A, super fast, B, or with headphones in, or C, in these times, I just do them online. So my message is, let's make the golden standard to live a fulfilled life, with or without a disability and we as a society to try and facilitate that as much as possible. And we as a society are capable of doing that. For example, during the COVID-19 pandemic, we have shown all across the globe that we as humans are very adaptive. Countless measures have been put in place. Think of telecommunication, working from home, live streams and crowd management. Coincidentally, these are also a lot of accessibility measures which we all can benefit from. So to have these options available is already a step towards inclusivity. So if we put our mind to it, we can achieve so much more in this area. Speaking about our mind, let's change our mindset. Try not to make so many assumptions. I mean, don't expect me to be a lifeguard or a firefighter. You can cross that off the list, I don't mind. But try not to make so many assumptions because the narrative society holds almost always doesn't fit. And let's re-evaluate the golden standard of walking. And step by step, we can hopefully make a change. And that change starts with changing our perceptions around the disability. Thank you.